This video is sponsored in part by Surfshark VPN. I don't get this dingling, the dingling a ling design. Just, <coughs> just no thanks. The Apple Spring Forward event has come and gone and a lot was unveiled, but there are a ton of details that they didn't tell you and were really easy to miss that you should really know before you make a purchase. Let's talk about the new iMacs, the Apple TV, the new iPads Pro, and of course, the AirTags. Hmm. Oh. It's delicious. It is yummy. Oh, hmm. When the new iMacs were announced, I was stoked about it. I love so much about it because I feel like Apple is solidifying a new generation of computers where the brains of it are insanely powerful while being about the size of the phone that you're using right now. It's ridiculous and amazing if you just allow yourself to appreciate it. But after watching the event, the excitement wears off at least a little bit and you start looking at the nitty gritty and find some issues with it. But it doesn't change how amazing it is because there's a lot to be stoked about. Here are both the lesser known good and bad things about the new iMacs. First, Apple has color match everything with the iMac. Whatever color you get, the mouse, the keyboard, and even the power cable will be the same color. With that power cable, you attach it to the back with a MagSafe light connection, which makes it super easy, elegant, and definitely proprietary. But back there, you won't see an SD card slot, so that stinks. And while you can declutter your desk by having the power brick on the ground with a super clever ethernet port on the back, that ethernet port is only available on the upgraded iMac. And even worse for the base model iMac, for some reason you only get two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. What do you have to do to get four ports? Well, you probably guess it. You have to go with the upgraded model to get all four of them. And still, only two of those ports are Thunderbolt. They really are just using the same M1 chip again with all of its limitations. And that makes me wonder if you can attach more than one monitor to it or if you're stuck with just one like on the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air. Now, I don't want to get too negative because the iMac is only 11.5 millimeters thick, which is insanity. <laughs> it really is mostly a display, but the thinness means that a headphone jack would take up too much room to have the port on the back. So you know what? They put it on the side. Hilarious. But it's not so thin that it can't fit some supposedly great sounding spatial audio, Dolby Atmos speakers, and fans that are as quiet as 10 decibels, which as an audio engineer, you really can't hear that and your room tone naturally makes noises at louder volumes than that. Since it's so thin and mostly display, I know that this would look sick if it was on a vase amount. And you can totally do that uh, if you purchase the vase amount model. Unfortunately, you can't move between a stand and a vase amount. That's because it uses different hardware on the back, so you're stuck with whichever style you choose, which is a major bummer. Another bummer is how Apple focused on color matching everything, including the Magic Mouse, but the charging port is still on the bottom of it, which continues to be a form over function choice to not have ports showing. It still drives me nuts. And oddly, the new keyboard doesn't even have a backlight, so you can't see your keys in the dark, which would have been nice. But one thing that I think is amazing is the addition of Touch ID on a wireless keyboard. Real talk, I've wanted this for so long that I literally legit shouted out touch ID when they announced it. I was like really happy. What's cool is that it works with any other Mac with the M1 chip on it, but it doesn't work with the iPad Pro, which I find curious. Maybe that's because the iPad Pro has face ID, something that I still think needs to be in a Mac. I really hope Apple adds that eventually. The one part that sucks about all this though, is that the base model iMac doesn't come with a touch ID keyboard. You have to pay $50 more to get one. Another reason to not get the base model. And for those of you who type a ton of numbers, you can get a full size keyboard with a number pad. And it does seem like you want to get a keyboard that meets all of your needs because you can't buy the keyboard separately from the iMac, at least so far. And finally, Apple did it. They added a 1080p webcam along with some nifty image processing similar to what you see in an iPhone. Finally. Oh, that was a lot. Now for the Apple TV. The new Apple TV 4K isn't all that new other than an A12 chip that you'll see in the current iPhones. There's HDMI 2.1 support and a well-needed ugly functional Siri remote. Now for those of you in the know, despite supporting HDMI 2.1, it does not currently support 120 hertz, but there are some rumblings that it's being tested internally, so we might see that perhaps at WWDC. Okay, that's that's a bit of a bummer, but at least you're able to color calibrate your display using your iPhone, which is wild. That's way more elegant than this thing that I used to put on all my computer monitors to calibrate for myself. Look at this ugly, clumsy thing. Now, if only Apple made it possible to use this feature on any display hooked up to your Mac, that would be a game changer. And then the new Siri remote with all those buttons on it. But strangely, it's not compatible with the Find My network, nor does it have an ultra wideband U1 chip, which seems to be a missed opportunity to solve the common pain point that all mankind has had. Um, and by the way, am I the only one who wants to move into this house? It looks great. And then we have the new iPad Pros, and I'm gonna do something that I wasn't expecting because of them. But before I get into that, I wanna tell you about this video 
sponsor, Surfshark VPN. If you don't have a VPN, what are you doing? They're so helpful for a ton of different things like protecting your privacy and browsing history by encrypting your data, which is super helpful because, well, surprise, your internet service provider snoops on everything you're browsing and downloading. You uh, no longer have to worry about them sending you a letter because they didn't like what you were downloading, Mr. Pirate. Or maybe you're exploring the wonderful world of crypto wow. and you want to change your location to nearly anywhere in the world using any one of their servers in 65 countries to prevent your information or location from being shared. So a VPN is great for that, especially if you're trying to get into the more advanced crypto and your country blocks certain exchanges. To the moon! And one of my personal favorites, using Surfshark VPN to access region block content like The Office, which isn't available in the US anymore because it's now on yet another streaming service. Jeez, you Brits know what's up. It's as easy as a few clicks. Speaking of clicks, click the link down below in the description and make sure to use my code tech today to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Using Surfshark is risk free because they have a 30 day money back guarantee. So give them a shot, experience more internet freedom and help support the channel all at the same time. Thanks so much to all of you who check it out and thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now I admit, at first the iPad Pros didn't really blow me away. The existing iPad Pro is so good and so far beyond any other tablet right now that I really didn't see a need to upgrade. It's more than capable and powerful enough for most people's needs. But the more I thought about it, the more that I thought I should get the new one. Let me explain. First, even though adding an M1 chip seems massively overkill for a tablet, this further widens the gap between the competition and gives it a ton of headroom for a pro task. You add in the higher RAM limit of 16 gigabytes and you can get some real work done with that. In fact, it's actually more powerful than the base model MacBook Air. And then the fact that it has a Thunderbolt port means that you can attach a display and any number of docks and accessories to it make it even more capable of doing way more than it lets on. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed the order that Apple announced all these products in. How smart is it to launch a full on computer with the Apple M1 chip in it? And then at the end of the keynote, they show that they're putting the same M1 chip in an iPad, a tablet. That's wild. Make no mistake, Apple's really intentional about all this stuff. Anyways, then you add in the liquid retina display that you utilizes mini LED. This tech allows for significantly brighter displays than OLED. So these new iPad Pros will have a thousand nits of full screen brightness and an insane 1,600 nits of peak brightness. You really could use this out in the sun. Now if only they can make their laptops brighter, we'll see. Rumors about a micro LED in their Pro model, so pretty stoked for that. Now the liquid retina display manages to have that insane contrast ratio and power savings that goes head to head with OLED by having over 2,500 local dimming zones, a multitude more than what the competitors are planning to put in their own micro LED displays. Now there's always one bummer and unfortunately this amazing display is only available on the 12.9 model. I personally prefer a smaller 11 inch model. I guess uh, we're gonna go big this year. So what is the need for all this power and why would I get it? Final Cut Pro. If Apple brings Final Cut Pro to this thing it'll make sense to me and that could very well come later on this year at WWDC. The ability to run a pro level money making crucial to my channel edit on the go in a tiny form factor with with great battery life and touch is something that I've wanted for so long. If they don't bring Final Cut to the iPad Pro, you really have to wonder, why are they making it so powerful then? And then you have AirTags. <laughs> Apple's entry into smart tags that help you locate things starts off far ahead of its competitors like Tile with the addition of ultra wideband, which is an insanely specific location accurate precision finding technology that can tell you the specific direction of where your air tag is and even how far away it is. On top of that, the hundreds of millions if not billions of Macs, iPhones, iPads and other Apple devices create a network that helps you locate your air tag around the world with the Find My Network. Here's a way that you might be able to think about it. It's kind of like the blockchain network, but instead of crypto, it's Apple devices and all of them connect to each other and create a powerful network. The Find My Network is built on top of it. It's pretty neat and they have the ability to have privacy in mind. Now if you're concerned about someone throwing an air tag on your car or your bag and stalking you or your name is Patrick, then don't worry. Apple is currently the only company that built in a feature that can detect whether an air tag that doesn't belong to you appears to be following you around and then it'll notify you. Now if someone finds your air tag, they can just tap it against the NFC enabled Apple device and then it'll provide your
your contact information, even on an Android device. Now, if you're away from your AirTag for longer than three days and someone happens to move it, it'll make an audible sound to make its presence known. What's great about the AirTag is that it does indeed have an IP67 water and dust resistance. And then the part that is easily my favorite and surprisingly un-Apple like is the fact that the battery is replaceable with a standard coin size battery. Now they could have done what everyone else like Tile and Samsung has done and designed it so that you have to purchase a new tracker once the battery dies, but they're letting you use it until it stops working and legitimately helping reduce e-waste. So way to go Apple, credit where it's due. I've always hated how wasteful and expensive the other options, even if it lasts about a year. Oh, and as for the price, a shockingly inexpensive $29 or $99 for four. But with even the cheapest AirTag accessory, it does put the price of the AirTag close to that of the tile, unless you buy this expensive Hermes thing. I I, I don't get this dingling, the dingling a ling design. Just, <coughs> just no thanks. So now you know a bunch of the nuance, little differences, quirks, frustrating things, and awesome things about Apple's new lineup. Let me know what you're thinking of getting or not getting, what frustrates you and what excites you and why by leaving a comment below and joining us in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. Don't forget to check out Surfshark VPN by clicking the link down below in the description so you can get 83% off plus three months for free. And thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.